Okay, so if you guys don't know me, I'm Andrew, I have a YouTube channel. I guess I'm kind of known as the Google Ads guy. I scaled Google Ads the first year, I spent $250,000 on Google Ads, I brought in almost 1.1 million my first year, strictly from Google Ads, I did nothing else. So, we're gonna talk about what I know, mostly, is Google Ads, and we'll talk a little bit about Facebook Ads. We're gonna try to kind of dive deep, so hopefully I give you guys some good value. And at the end of the course, um, at the end of this session, I have a present for all of you. If you didn't see on my YouTube channel, I made a five hour Google Ads course, completely free, no strings attached. Starting from the very beginning, like had it, starting from nothing and building out an entire campaign and you'll be a pro by the end of it. So if Google Ads interests you, at the end of this, just come talk to me, I'll give you access to the course. And uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about Google Ads. Um, Completely different opinion than Ricardo uh, SEO. He hates Google Ads, but yeah. So let's first talk about social media and branding. Though this is something that I really, really want to stress out that I notice nobody does, no. and I'm not kidding. Nobody does this at all. So I can't take credit for this slide, guys. This is from Alex Ramosi. Does anybody know who Alex Ramosi is? So real quick, one slide on branding. Brand is not a thing, it's an association we, we make between things that we know and things people don't know, our company. So when you think of Nike, everybody automatically assumes just do it. Everybody automatically assumes like fitness influencers, I'm gonna go kick ass and take over the world. And when you talk about branding for your company or your personal brand, your personal brand we're gonna get into in a minute is very important because who you associate with is gonna be your personal brand. Technically, my personal brand might be, I look like Aquaman, right? Um, I give value, I have a YouTube channel, I do Google Ads, like that's my personal brand. So what you guys really need to think about is what's gonna set you apart with your company. And I had to think about this when Alex Ramosi made this bouquet example, he's like each flower you put a bouquet makes up your brand. And I was thinking like, oh shit, what is my personal brand? What is my company brand? And I had to really think about it for a minute. And the only thing that separated me from everybody else in the junkie movie space was this. Star Wars, right? So I feel like that was my personal brand, or my company brand, my personal brand on YouTube was hopefully I get value, get value, give, give, give. I'm the Google guy, I did a million in my first year. Whatever your personal brand is, and I want you to think about this because we're gonna dive into social media and branding yourself. So I was thinking, okay, what, what can separate us as junker media companies if we all have the same intangibles? We're all, I'm assuming we're all licensed and insured. I'm assuming we all try to do amazing customer service. I assume some people try to lower their prices. This is always not the best solution. I assume we all have booking online. If you don't, you guys should have all this stuff. I'm assuming that we show up with our uniforms. I'm assuming that we all have nice little cool logos. I assume that we all bank on, we're local family owned. So I was trying to think if we're all the same, how can we differentiate ourselves? And these are just a couple flowers in the bouquet that I came up with that would really separate you and make your company stand out that a lot of people don't do. Really stress on the fact with your four R's. Resell, repurpose, recycle, reuse, right? Be known as the guy that does that more than others. Community involvement. I did nothing for the community. I, I mean, I would help the occasional old lady that called in and was like sick and she was, I just felt really bad and I'd help her out. But community involvement. I did no community involvement. Volunteering. Whatever. Point is, guys, try to think of something. <laughs> try to think of something that you think would separate your company from everybody else. I was struggling to think of something. The only thing that I had was Star Wars. So this is more of like a thought exercise. When you think of when somebody thinks of your brand, personal and company brand, how are you going to stand out? And we're going to talk. And this is mostly relating to personal brand too, because I know a lot of people aren't social media wizards like this guy, but. Personal brand is everything. Personal brand is so important now. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk, Alex Somoza talks about personal brand. Personal brand meaning you need to be kind of the face of your company, you need to put yourself out there. Um, if you don't have brand presence or personal brand presence, it's gonna be harder to be discovered. And we're gonna talk about personal brand now across social media. So, we're gonna talk about Facebook, your personal brand on Facebook, and this is something everybody is sleeping on that nobody does. We're gonna talk about Facebook, in YouTube, then we're gonna hop over to the juicy stuff, Google Ads and Facebook Ads. So, we're not gonna talk about groups. Um, shout out to, where's Matt Pitch? 
Chubb Rural Business Owners Discussion Group. Make sure you join 27,000.2K members now. Um, ran by uh, Matt Fitch. So this is a Facebook profile, your personal profile, not your business profile. We're gonna dive into why this is so important. I'm using Matt as an example because Matt does this perfectly. So if you look at Matt, this is Matt's personal page. Okay, we're not even talking about his business page. I would say your Facebook brand on your personal page is more important than your company business page now. So you need to become, and this is this is something that a lot of people struggle with. So like, oh, that's what my family is. I don't use Facebook. I don't want to cross the two. You need to cross the two. Um, you need to get a cover image. You need to do this. You need to have a little professional photo. You need to have your intro here. Um, you need to change your personal brand on your Facebook. You are now your brand, your personal Facebook. And we're going to talk about why this is so important. Matt Vick solely survived off Facebook when he grew his company. I had a really long talk with him, and I was like, dude, how did you, how did you start your company with no ads? Facebook, literally Facebook. Yard signs, supplemental, all that stuff, but it's because he used Facebook, he reached out to realtors, and I want to give you guys a couple tips how you can explode your personal brand on uh, um, Facebook. But as you can see, he has 3,000 friends because he's adding people constantly. So, um, oh yeah, so you're gonna post about your company a few times a week, but you're also gonna post you, you're gonna use your Facebook as like your personal Facebook and your business Facebook. So post you with your family, post you drinking coffee, post, keep Matt post fishing all the time. He posts fishing photos, he posts photos with his wife, he posts photos, and then he posts business photos, he posts stories. He's very active on his personal Facebook. Okay, and then here's me doing dispatch. I had almost 2,000 friends, but I stopped. I just stopped caring about a personal brand as much. And then we got another one on here, somebody who's doing it right. We got Carson, I took a peek at you, so Carson is now branding himself. He is. Um, that's Carson, if you guys don't know who this is. Where's Carson at? Shout out to Carson. Now, what do you do with your Facebook groups? So. A lot of people, when they first started Facebook, they thought you would go spam blast the for sale section and Facebook communities, right? You would just go post in the for sale section and you would go post, post in, um, you go find community, like buy, sell groups and all real estate groups and you go spam blast your company. No, 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 no. We don't do that. What you do is you find the realtor groups in your local community and you find local community groups, like I live in Playa Vista, right? It's a very small community but you'll find these local communities. It doesn't matter what the community is, as long as it's close to you, okay? And what you're gonna do, every single day, for the next 180 days, is you're gonna add 100 people a day. So yes, your Facebook will now become five, you will start, I had 200 friends when I started, right? So I started this, um, I was adding junk removal business owners because I was targeting junk removal business owners. So 1,300 of these people are junk removal business owners, right? So what you're going to do is you're actually gonna go find a real estate group and you're gonna add 100 people a day in local community groups and in real estate groups and you're gonna grow your friend list because I promise you, this will pay dividends later. You will get massive amounts of work from Facebook. A year later, you'll get a house clean out from Stacy, right? You will get massive amounts of exposure on Facebook when you do boosted posts or you run Facebook ads. You need to grow your Facebook personal profile. And this is your brand. So you gotta make it look like, you know, this guy probably does the best right here, but you know, any of these. So go to Fiverr, this cost me $15. This photo cost me $5, it cost me 15 bucks to have a dude on Fiverr do all this. And he makes a LinkedIn version for you, a Twitter version, a YouTube version. The whole package will be like 30 bucks, okay? And remember, you don't stop being human on Facebook. If you like fishing, like Matt, you post fishing. So become your brand, your personal fit, become your brand, your personal Facebook, and you become one. Add 100 people a day on Facebook and local communities. Post normal stuff every two to three days. Post about your business. Oh, outreach to realtors. I think I had an example. So outreach to realtors, outreach to anybody you think on Facebook. We're not talking about standing for sale section for local communities. But if you do this for the next six months and you add 100 people a day, it's really fucking easy, guys. It's super easy. You live, some people, you'll get rejected and say, you can't add Stacey because you can't share privacy settings. Just keep 
going, it's, you can go and add so many people. Oh, look, Matt, you made it. You made the cut, you're right here. Oh, you're right there. That's right here. So anyways, um, I hope that helps with Facebook. And if anybody has questions, just ask. I <laughs> get so ripped. <laughs> I'm ripped up here, but you gotta get rid of this. Um, so, um, guys, the human element of Facebook will bring you massive amounts of business. Trust me. I have my biggest job from Facebook a year later was a house clean out for like six grand. Stacy was her name, which is why I always use Stacy. So Stacy reached out. She saw me being awesome on Facebook. Was like, you're always supposed to be like, blah blah blah, and then she ended up being a house clean out. So. Don't sleep on Facebook. Turn your personal Facebook into you're now one with your company. You are your brand. You are no longer you. So, YouTube. Okay. I have a lot to say about YouTube. So, everybody knows this podcast right here, right? So, we're going to talk about YouTube. And I know, good looking again. I, I can't really tell. But if you guys see something, he has four. 1,100 videos. Some people would call that consistent, discipline, willpower, great. Some people might call it psychotic and insane. Because that is just, that is a wild fucking number. And I don't, I think that does count my videos, I don't know. But point is, guys, a lot of YouTubers, here's my Jedi Jump Google YouTube channel, completely separate from my personal. So make sure you separate the two. We're going to talk about, um, I only, I, I wish I was like Ricardo and I would have done more, but after every job or after, during every job, you should film every video. Now, the proper film every job. Now, here's what most people do that I've noticed, and maybe you guys have noticed this too. Everybody on YouTube is trying to be a YouTuber, which is no, I have no problem with junk guys starting a YouTube channel and it's following a journey of building a business. That's, that's fine, but the problem is that leads to one path. At the end, you're not an educator. You can either sell out, which, you know, I sell something, teach people. You're, you're getting the wrong customer base, right? And they're merging the two. They'll do their junk jobs and then they'll talk about, hey, here's me building my business, here's my journey, which is great, which is fine. But nobody, nobody is doing this. Nobody's doing this. What Ricardo does is this. Okay, Ricardo has 500 hot tub videos. 400 basketball hoop videos, 250 removing the trampoline videos, eight, um, 26 removing satellite fish videos. I can go on and on and on. Google will sometimes throw videos into the mix. And we're not even talking about when people go to YouTube and search, but how to remove a basketball. Look at all these videos, all Ricardo. So point is, if you're gonna start a personal brand for your company and you're gonna start your Jedi Jump Google channel or whatever channel, I strongly suggest filming every job. Now this is a lot of work. I don't know how he does it. I have no freaking idea how you, I have an editor helping me out, so I don't know how you do it, but if you could film every video, it doesn't matter if it's as simple as removing a satellite dish. This dude has like 27 satellite dish videos on his channel and 250 hot tub videos. And he puts the zip code sometimes, he puts the city, the point is, within a year, if you have SEO searchable videos, I sorted by old. I wanted to see his old outdoor grill, grill removal 12 years ago. Ricardo is a perfect example of how you utilize YouTube the right way. The wrong way is showing the journey of you building a business, unless that's the audience you intend that you want, which that leads to one path at the end. All you can do is now you're a business educator about junk removal, and there's really one, those aren't gonna bring you customers. If you want customers, do videos like this, okay? So, Ricardo, good job, um, you killed it. So, you guys are only 4,100 videos away from catching up to Ricardo. <laughs> that's insane though, that's, that's, but guys, even if you do it over the next year and you add people on Facebook every day, 100 people on Facebook until you hit the max of 5,000, and then, you take a video every time you get a job. It doesn't matter if it's 10, 15 seconds. Look, his first video is 18 seconds, okay? 18 seconds, that's his first video. His second video, he made it a minute, then 25, then 30. So just film you removing the basketball hoop and upload it to your branded channel, okay? 
Same guy did this for 10 bucks, his banner, all of this stuff. And you can see I started dirt removal, junk removal, but I didn't keep up with it. I, I went more of my personal YouTube direction. So the two things that people are sleeping on, guys, is using their Facebook as a personal brand properly and using YouTube properly. So I hope that helps. Um, that's all I wanted to talk about. Um, make tons of videos of titles that people would search. Bring your channel to your company. Be consistent most videos as often as you can. Um, that's it. That's all I have for social media. I just wanted to touch on that before we get into the Google ads. Did that help? Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, what's up? What's your thought on videos that originally were YouTube, but putting them on like Facebook videos or these that might not be SEO? Yeah, so you're saying take the video that you would, would put on YouTube and maybe put it on Instagram shorts, TikTok shorts, and Facebook? Or are you just asking about Facebook in general? Facebook in general. Yes, it's so. I just don't know if there's any business value there. Yeah, so I, I have a lot of Facebook videos. I would upload all these videos, tons of videos to my Facebook channel. Um, unless you're doing reels and you're trying to go viral or vertical videos on Facebook, it didn't help as much. It just seemed like I was spamming my Facebook. Um, but if you upload it to your business page, that's fine, but it's not gonna really, it's not gonna have the, the impact that this will. It's just content. It's just content, and I have a Brick load of content on my Facebook business page. It doesn't really, it did nowhere near as much damage as my personal page did. My personal Facebook. So, um, yeah, YouTube's gonna, so I guess the answer is no. Won't really, yeah. Unless you make it a short, which, you know, Facebook tries to push out shorts and make them go viral. But, you know, the shorts can bring some business, but not really as much. So, did that help, guys? I, I hope that helps a little bit. What's up? Yeah, I, I have two separate. So I have my personal page and I have my your business, yeah, right? That, that's okay, though, right? Yeah, yeah. I have my business page too, and Matt has his business page too. How do you feel about um, you know, like when I post stuff on my personal on my business page? Um, you get a lot of requests from other junk people coming. Mm -hmm. Is that cool? I, I don't yeah, know. I mean, a lot of times I'm like, you know. Yeah, they're not your customer. They're just, right. I'm they're just all, we're all just being friends with each other, right? right. But those aren't your customers. Right. So what, Matt? And other people do is they'll post like a family photo and it'll have all the junk removal stuff. Like, hey, we do this, this, and this. I can pull up Matt's profile and we can see it. And then he'll share his business page post to his personal Facebook. You know, post on his Facebook, on his business, and he'll share it to his personal. But Matt uses his personal Facebook way more. He's added like hundreds of realtors and he has tons of friends that he just adds. Um, and local community groups. But yeah, um, your personal is gonna be, don't stop using your business page. Definitely like try to get reviews on your Facebook business page, but uh, your personal is gonna bring you so much more business. Okay, so any other questions or should we dive into Google Ads? Yeah, it seems like Matt and JoJo, maybe Matt's kind of mixing his pages now mm -hmm. as an educator and- He just launched his coaching. Yeah. Yeah. He just watches yeah. coaching stuff. So it's almost like he's how's that gonna affect what he's doing? Is he I guess I don't have the answer, but he does have a lot of comfortable Facebook friends, so I mean he's got I don't think it's gonna hurt him. It's just now he's also a coach. Um, but I don't think it's gonna affect him. I think he's always gonna be posting more about his junk removal business and his coaching. But yeah. Um, now on the videos most of these YouTubers seem like they're, they're pushing more to get monetized and uh, make, make money off their YouTube channels. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was, Ricardo was distracting me. <laughs> so what was, what was the question? It seems like you're trying to push to be more, to get their YouTube channels monetized where they can make money on that. And I've seen some of them pushing more toward that direction. Yeah. What, what do you, what's your feeling about that? So there's no money in YouTube, guys. <laughs> Um, uh, Matt and JoJo probably make good money. I make for my, I have 6,800 subscribers right now, and the highest month I've had in Facebook ads is 500, and uh, this month I'll probably do 200, 250 bucks. From, it's cool, it's cool. We just go take it to Roos Chris Steakhouse, but um, yeah, so. I have about 4,100 videos. Do you have them all monetized? All of them are monetized. How much do you make a month? I don't make much, I make about 480. Well, I make, oh, okay, shit. But I also, you have a lot more like yeah. content that's not dedicated to business. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. With that being said, um, the answer, I don't know how that's gonna affect Matt, but yeah. Should we dive into Google Ads? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay.
let's talk about the new reality. By the way, I made this presentation yes, last night. I went to bed at like midnight, so bear with me. And if you guys have questions, please dive in, because this might be all over the place, okay? Who is running Google Ads? Just kind of, who's running Google Ads? Holy shit, nobody. Wow, okay, who, who has ran them and got burned? Okay, so only five people. Is anybody, are people curious about Google Ads? Okay. Do any of you guys, who knows about Google, like who understands Google Ads? Like who understands how it works, keywords, bidding? Okay, so wow, we got, okay, cool. So I'm gonna try to simplify it as much as I can. If you have questions, please just ask. The national average right now, from what I have found out from talking to people in my own ads, I spent about a half a million dollars in those two years on Google Ads. CPL is cost per lead. Um, Google calls it a conversion. In marketing world, we call it cost per lead. So, let's do some quick math. Who, who can tell me their average job size last week? Who knows their average job size? Can somebody tell me an average job size? 550. 550, okay, so, so if you guys aren't doing your average job size, take your total sales at the end of the month, divide it by the number of jobs. Get your average job size. So, the average job size is five hundred and fifty. Oh my God, my hand is really bad. Five hundred and fifty. Five hundred fifty dollars. So this is so this is where this is where Google gets this is where Google gets expensive and why people get burned. We're going to get into it, but the cost per conversion, cost per lead. Google calls it a conversion. A conversion is if set up properly, a phone call or an email submission lead. Okay, so if I have to pay $55 for a phone call, now I know in my business, I close 50% of my phone calls, okay? So if we do the math, it takes me two phone calls to actually get in front of the customer. So I'm paying 110 bucks. Am I that bad? Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take my time. I'll take my time. Like it says, pass us a soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll write better. I'll write better. Okay. AJS, 550. And then, okay, so the CPL is, cost per lead is 55 bucks. But if it takes two, because we all probably both about 50%, you know, I actually don't know your guys' numbers. You might book higher because you get more, but when you get into the Google Ads game, you're gonna book about 50% of them because half of them are price shoppers and it sucks, but it still works out. So if it takes me two phone calls to get in front of a customer, it costs me $110. So that would technically be, because we'll talk about this in a minute, but that's called your customer acquisition cost, CAC. So my CAC is $110. If it costs me $110 on Google to get in front of a customer, my average job size is 550. Obviously, we have to take into account our costs, our cost of goods sold. You know, probably subtract 20%. But we're making money, right? And that's what's important is you have to make sure your CPL is low and your average job size is high in order for Google Ads to be worth it. But the problem is most people fuck up really bad. And they end up paying $100 per lead, so their cost, their customer acquisition cost is $200 because they have garbage keywords, garbage negative keywords, a bad landing page. We're gonna get into that. But this is what people are paying right now. I've heard some agencies claim that they're somewhere here, 15 to 30. So you can even get it lower. But at the end of the day, guys, that's the basics of how Google Ads work. Um, now, why Google Ads is getting more tough is I honestly, I honestly think it's because there is more competition. I mean, that's just common sense, right? People like uh, YouTubers like me, Matt and JoJo, Ricardo, we're constantly talking about how awesome John Google is. So to the elephant in the room is we're probably making it a little harder, sorry guys, but we're gonna help you guys get ahead. So um, I do think Google Ads by the end of this year will show out. I'm having constant phone calls. I, I have at least 20 phone calls a month. People are getting burned constantly on Google. They're just running through their bankroll and they're losing all of their money. So I think by the end of the year, people are gonna realize, oh shit, Google Ads is a little bit harder than I thought. And I think it will start to level out and won't be as competitive. Um, and yeah, so that's the good news. You can play this game. I'm gonna teach you guys how to play this game if you wanna play this game. 
but it's very difficult. Not difficult, it's, it's tedious. So with Google Ads, guys, what you put in, you should always get a minimum return on ad spend of 3x, okay? My average, what is the math? Uh, what I did, I spent 250,000. <coughs> so, 1 million, 59,000. Does that four point, did you do the math? Okay, so I had an average by the end of the year of a four X return. My bad months, I probably hit, there's been a really bad month where I probably got like a, a, two, a 2.5 X, but on average, you should try to shoot for three X minimum. I would average spend $20,000 a month, I'd get back 60. Some months I'd get back 80, some months I'd get back 100. So that's your goal. And this is a very attainable goal if you do it right. Most people don't. So the only thing about Google though, and I'm gonna to try to explain this is, you need bankroll. I don't know, it's how Google's algorithm works is you, you kind of have to burn through some, through some money and I'm gonna explain why, because it sounds so stupid. Like, why do you have to burn through money? How does that, like, why does that, why does it work that way? But yeah, at the end of the day, I like people to have two or three months of bankroll for Google Ads alone. So if you wanna do Google Ads, and I suggest everybody start with 50 a day, if you go my route. If you go with an agency, they're gonna want you to start with 100 to 150, and I'll explain why. But if you use my course, you do it yourself, you can probably start with 50 days, so you do the math, it's 1,500 a month, I would like you to have 4,500 strictly for Google Ads. If you do 100 a day, that's 3,000 a month, have nine grand aside for Google Ads. And we're gonna talk about how to do Google Ads safely. But the new reality is this, it's expensive and it's competitive. But there's still a way to win. And Google Ads, there's three components. It's very easy when looking at it from a bird's eye perspective, but when we dive in, it gets a little more complicated. But there's three components to Google Ads. The keywords people search up, you have your search keywords and your negative keywords, okay? This is where everybody fucks up, right here. We're gonna talk about that, those in depth. And some people are doing negative keywords, but they're still, they're still missing them. They're still missing a lot of things. So I did a search last, <laughs> last night for uh, Junk Google Dallas. This is what I got. 1 800 was number 1 800 was number one. Junk Lovers number two. Is the Junk Genie in here? Okay. It was. No, that was, I think Junk Genius. Junk Genius. Oh. Yeah, I was actually, I was, I was making sure I wasn't going to bash him. Yeah, actually, it's, they, they do fine. We are, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to run ads. We are cheaper than Junk Kings, just like right out the gate saying, hey, we're cheaper. I mean, but you have three components to Google Ads, guys. It's this easy to win. You get your right keywords, you have some copy, your ad copy, and it goes to your landing page. Here's my landing page. Big ass phone number, we take this, and me, my lady, and our kids, right? Hey, look at us, we're family owned. Don't send your money to Canada to the 800 Got Chunk franchise. 10% goes to Canada. You know, come support a local family owned business. So, these are the components, very simple. Keywords, ad copy, Landing page. Now, as you can tell, I do not send them to my website. You can do that if your website is perfectly optimized for closing and your phone number's big and your website's not too much going on and it's perfectly optimized for converting a customer. But a reason, reason why most people use landing pages, it's easier to set up conversion tracking, number one. It's just you're dealing with one landing page. And this is, a, this is technically considered a funnel. You don't want the funnel, the website, to distract from the end goal. If they're searching for junk removal and they end up on a website and you've got a whole bunch of shit going on, like about me with the team and just all kinds of just random shit everywhere, it's gonna really confuse the customer. It needs to be to the point. Um, it says we do junk removal, all this stuff, bada boom, bada bang, that's it. So most people use a landing page because it's easier to set up conversion tracking and it's easier to convert a customer, okay? So I recommend doing the landing page. What's up? Do you do multiple landing pages? Like you have a hot tub landing page? That is, okay, so that, that was I was gonna talk about a little bit later. So every agency right now, um, 
sends them to a landing page. And you can actually set up dynamic text and you can make dynamic ad copy. It gets a little complicated where you can make things dynamic. But there is something that I was gonna do personally. I was almost considering like, fuck man, I could do Google Ads for people and kill it because there's so many things that these other agencies aren't doing because it takes a lot of work. And one of them is multiple landing pages. Imagine there was a hot tub landing page and it was me and my crew cutting a hot tub. Imagine if there were, we'll get into that later, but absolutely that would be killer. But the problem is it's gonna take a lot more work and time, but is it worth it? Will you get better conversions? Absolutely. So in my course, I teach you how to do all of this with one landing page. You can technically just do it all over again with multiple landing time. pages if you have the time. But no agency will do this for you. No agency in the right mind will do this for you. No marketing agency will. There, there needs to be an agency that eventually does that. So, hint, hint. So, structure of a Google campaign. How it works with Google is there's a campaign so, for example, with my Google campaign, I had one for Los Angeles, and I had one for Ventura County. Those are two completely separate counties. Under a campaign, you have ad groups. And this is where things get, this is where you have to get creative. So an ad group is, as you can see, I have it broken down into multiple ad groups, okay? So in the junk removal ad group, you would have all the keywords customers would type. So under ad groups, you have keywords and then ads. So you have the keywords that customers search up. So you would have junk removal, junk removal hauling, junk pickup, junk service, I need junk removal. You would have 100 different keywords related to junk removal. Got junk. Guys, don't sleep on this. I have a campaign dedicated towards got junk and it performs, you'll see, I think I have a screenshot here. It performs, it's the next best performing campaign. And these are the three best performing campaigns. Junk removal, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, furniture removal. So I have keywords, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, got junk, 800-GOT-JUNK, got junk prices. I have every single keyword related to got junk so I can bid my ads on them. And I have massive amounts of closings on these ads. So these are the three best, but you break these ad groups down so that you can make, um, where did Matt go? But anyways, you break these ad groups down and you put keywords in them that you want people to search up and then, like Matt said, you could technically have this go to a separate landing page, right? One would be a furniture removal landing page. One would be, a, but all agencies, including myself, we send them to the same landing page, right? So if you go back to this landing page, we serve any type of job, there's this blanket text right here, this generic text that basically says we cover everything that you just kind of, you look at hot tub, we'll do it, we do anything. Any type of junk. So, under the ad groups, you have the keywords that people are gonna search, search keywords, negative keywords, and then, of course, you have the ads for that, because you're gonna run junk removal ads for here, same junk removal ads, we got junk, but furniture removal ads, the ad copy might say furniture removal, right? And then the ad copy might say hot tub removal, and so on and so on. So that's the basic structure of a Google campaign. Why is constantly now uh, Okay, so, these work, these ring leads, estate clean outs, house clean outs, quarter clean outs, but the problem is you have to be a, a wizard with um, your keywords because a lot of people you get phone calls from aid service. So you gotta be super careful. And we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go over how you can make sure what negative keywords to use so you don't get up show that's, up from aid service. That's Jolly Cleaning. Yeah. Is that what drove that or what? Yeah. Um, so no, yes and no, but Jedi Cleaning. Um, when I did do Jedi cleaning, I didn't do house clean outs yet, but with Jedi junk removal, and I decided to add house clean outs, I was gonna do cleaning. Right. I was getting a lot of cleaning calls. Right, right, right. And yes, and that, I wouldn't say that was the, the inspiration, but it probably was part of it, yeah. Jedi cleaning guys, by the way, I was going to start a cleaning company, but I, it was just too much work to start a software company. I just couldn't do it. Um, massive opportunity there, though, if you guys want to start a sister company. Um, even market to your current customers like you do cleaning, just get a couple awesome ladies. We got some awesome ladies on Craigslist. I feel bad because they're incredible and I can't even utilize them. But uh, yeah. Um, so that's the basic structure, okay guys? So here's a dashboard. This is my, when I started running ads on January 1st of 2022, I couldn't get access to my old account. The guy that I sold the company to did not respond to me. I'm a little irritated, but this was my first Google account that I started with. In this period of these three months, this is when I first started my junk removal company in September 2021, and I started running the ads. 
um, September, August, August or September, August, probably November or something. But as you can see, conversions, we talk about conversions, CPL, cost per lead, same thing, marketing term is cost per lead. Um, my cost per conversion, if you average it out over these three months, what does it say? $55. Now, I have email form submission and phone number. Now, this is where a lot of people panic too. It is some days, you'll get this. That's fucking ridiculous, right? But you gotta trust Google's algorithm, okay? We're gonna talk about Google's algorithm, max, uh, maximize clicks, target CPA, all this stuff we'll talk about. But you will have days where it's retarded, okay? And Google, you just have other junk removal companies bidding against each other, bidding against each other, and sometimes the cost just gets higher, and you can't let that freak you out. This freaks me out. Three hundred dollars for one fucking phone call—that's ludicrous. But you gotta understand the long game of Google. It will average out. Okay, that's why you need money in the bank because you might have a bad first freaking week. You might have a bad first two weeks. Your negative keywords aren't set up properly. You're bad on the phone. Um, Google's figuring out the out. Google's algorithm is just trying to get you in the mix with all the other people. So you can't let this freak you out. You see, I had 761 clicks and a conversion rate. The conversion rate is how many? Go ahead. Sorry. Well, so if you're first starting out, do you want to lower your cap to like 150 just so you can figure out what you're yeah. doing and we're, see if you hit that ceiling? So we're actually going to talk about how to protect against this. So there's a way to avoid this in the beginning, right? Once you eventually set your campaign to target CPA, I'll explain that later. Okay. I'm going to teach you guys how to protect yourselves against this. Um, and kind of like slowly ramp yourself up. Um, agencies don't do this for you. It's, it's too much work, it's too time consuming. Agencies will do the bare minimum because they have other clients. Like they'll set, they'll set your uh, target $150 a day and they'll, they'll stuff it with all the negative keywords that they use with all the other clients, which you would think in theory would work, but it's surprising each county has their own weird keywords that people type in right. and you'll start paying for keywords. You're like, fuck, I don't want to pay for that. And then you're just burning through money because they put a cap and they're trying to collect data because data is very important. You, you cannot play this game without data. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But you need data. You, data is clicks. You need people to search and click. Without searches and clicks, Google doesn't know where to put you or what to do. So what they do is like, hey, spend 150 bucks a day. We're going to collect data for a month and then we'll fine tune. That is the, the, that's a way to do it if you are rich. But... <sighs> Yeah, we'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, Jedi, Jedi, before you switch over real quick, uh, I want to uh, ask a question. Uh, what is? I know you're focusing more on Google Ads, and they're one that produces leads. Now, what differs them from Thumbtack, Yelp, and uh, what's the other one I used uh, and got raped? Um, Angie's. Angie's Lips, yeah. So Thumbtack, yeah. Yelp, and Angie's, those are... Do they, do they run the same way like this? No, no, this? so big difference. The difference with those two is they sell, okay, so Thumbtack sells your lead to multiple people. Right. So you're bidding against other people. Yeah, it's a rat race. Yelp yeah. is the same thing. If somebody, look, even if, if somebody goes and types in junk removal and they click on you, and this is so, this is so lame. You can, I used to pay for this Yelp feature where if they message a junk removal company in your area, let's say I directly search junk removal and I directly click you, not even an ad. Don't even, you're not advertising on Yelp, and I click on you, right. and I message you. Right. Yelp has an option for other companies to pay to know when somebody messages you. And then Yelp sends that lead that they messaged you to five other people. Shit. Even if they message you directly, Yelp notifies, hey, this person just, so you're bidding against, so these are lead generators, lead aggregators, whatever you want to call them, but Thumbtack sells to three people, Yelp sells to five people, and you sell to X amount of people. So you're bidding, it's a race to the bottom from the beginning. Now, can you survive off those? These, these Google ads, Google, they cater to you? Google is, I'm looking for, I'm, a, I'm typing in junk removal you, near me, I am clicking on you and calling you. Okay. So you and the customer are on the phone, you have all the opportunity to close with your your, your equal suave, your, your personality, okay. your riz, as the Gen Z kids say. Charisma. The riz, as the young ones say. So, um, hot leads and are willing to pay the most. Thumbtack, hot, they're looking for it. Hot leads, 
but it's also a race to the bottom. We're looking for the cheapest. Now, it's not to say you're not going to get price shoppers and cheap people on Google, but in general, averaged out, Google people will pay the most. I had a $115,000 job. Uh, you guys see my YouTube video it, from Google. Is that because they got that uh, Google guarantee where they're verified and make sure that they're so right Google, it wasn't a Google guarantee. Lee. We'll talk about Google guarantee. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. I totally forgot to put Google guarantee in here, but uh, we'll talk about Google local services in a minute. But yes, that Google guarantee helps too. But Google okay. guarantee is getting expensive too. It's getting really expensive. Yeah. So conversion rate, guys, is how well is the landing page doing? How many people click? and how many people call. So if the average click, and by the way guys, if you don't know how Google works, you're paying per click, right? If somebody types in junk removal at 9 a.m., it may cost $15 for that click. If somebody types in junk removal at 2 a.m., you should be running your ads at 2 a.m., but if you were, that click might cost $5. So the, the amount per click changes based on how many people are bidding at what time, and what ads are running, and how many competitors, So you're paying per click. So how many clicks to how many phone calls is the conversion rate. You guys are shooting for a minimum of 15% conversion rate on your landing page. So if you do this yourself, 15%. These numbers are skewed. This is probably 20%, 20 to 25. And it's skewed because one of my phone call settings in the beginning when I set up my, my ads, when you set up conversion tracking. By the way, are you guys following? Is, are we? Oh, yeah. Oh, 15. Minimum 15 conversion. That's the absolute minimum. You can still probably make some money if your average job size is at least in the 400s. But shoot for 20 to 25. And how you boost your conversion rate is your landing page. A family photo, multiple landing pages, a hot tub one dedicated to a hot tub. You've got a hot tub with a big ass smile and making landing pages dedicated. Um, but conversion rate, so that's conversion rate is how many people click on average, if a click is ten dollars, a click, an average click right now in junk removal is about fifteen to twenty bucks. It's expensive. So if you do the math, fifty-five dollars is the national average cost per lead. That's about three, three to four clicks. So I get a phone call because each click is fifteen to twenty bucks, and if it's costing fifty-five dollars for a lead, that means on average three to four people are clicking and then calling. And that's just the name of the game. Not everybody's going to call that clicks. So. Conversion rate. Yeah. And now let's talk about some lingo. Okay, let's go over the lingo real quick. Cost per click. Does everybody understand cost per click? We're paying for the, the keyword we're bidding on. So we're, if we're bidding on the keyword, get rid of old furniture. And then we also bid on the keyword furniture removal. Can we all guess which one might be a cheaper click? Get rid of old furniture might be a little bit cheaper longer tail, more keywords, less people search it versus furniture removal. So that's just something, that we're gonna bid on every keyword and Google's gonna tell you how much you're paying on every keyword. Um, conversions and leads, that is conversions. Conversions are just a lead, right? Somebody emails you, somebody calls you, doesn't mean they're a client yet. Conversion rate, we just talked about, that's how many people actually call you or submit an email form from your landing page. We're shooting for 15% minimum, 25% you're a rock star and you're rich. You'll be able to just put fucking money in and money comes right out. Cost per conversion is what Google calls it, okay? Cost per conversion is what Google calls it. In marketing world, we call this a CPL, cost per lead. What does it cost you to actually get a phone call? CAC, the magic, the magic number. And this only, CAC will really apply to you guys when you actually start putting money into Google Ads and you really start really pouring money into Google Ads. But this is how much money did you spend on ads? Let's do a scenario. We'll do a scenario of me. Ad spend 20K. Now, the only way to get your CAC is if you actually track which calls and which, what you book from Google. So if we take 20K, and we got a hundred, uh, let's just say 200 new customers. Now you'll only know this if you, if you mark this in your CRM, like, hey, this customer came from a Google ad, that's call tracking, you guys gotta do call tracking too and all that stuff. So we'll, we'll talk about that as well. But if I got 200 customers, well not $200, sorry. If I got 
20,000, if I spent $20,000 on ads, guys, and I got 200 customers from that, what's my CAC? That's about what I get, too. My CAC is 100 bucks, right? 110, so it's, that's roughly, I put in 20 grand, I get 200 new clients every month. So, and that's, that's the national average. This is what you could potentially get, but it also depends on your population, how many people are searching um, for job approval in your area. Now, it's important to know your average job size so that when you actually calculate your CAC at the end of the month, you know if you're losing money or not, right? So, if this number is higher, and then your customer acquisition cap, then your customer acquisition cost, it makes sense. Like you probably want to factor your costs, take off 20%, you know, so take off 100 bucks, right? So you should be able to pull money in, pull money out. Uh, ROAS, just return on ad spend, kind of the same like return on investment, how much money you put in is how much money you get back. Like I told you guys, you want to shoot for 3x minimum, 5x on great months. So 3 to 5x. Any questions at all? Yeah, so your COGS is gonna be like fuel, dump fees, et cetera, yep. right? Okay, okay. Yep, most COGS is in junk removal, the labor associated. So just the labor on the job, not the labor. So whatever you think the labor is on the job, and you can just average, you know, do your numbers over the month and kind of average it out. So your labor, your fuel, and your dump fees are the only COGS in this business. But no um, other advertising. Yeah. No yard sign, you're not Google. Yeah, not 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 with Google. Because you're tracking your Google. Yeah, we're just tracking yeah, yeah. Google. Now, do you, should you get your CAC and all that stuff and yep. everything else? Facebook, yep, and could you average it out? Yes. But I would strongly recommend keeping Google one hundred percent separate. Yeah. But yes. And then you can compare apples to apples. Yes. Facebook, yeah. Yep, you can then you can, you can do Facebook. What's your CAC on Facebook and what what are you bring back? Um so why do people lose on Google Ads? Three things. It always starts with negative keywords. And I'm gonna, we're gonna go through negative keywords. I'm gonna give you guys some examples of why, oh, man, I've had so many phone calls of people burning their money. And even with other, they hire local, they hire local ad companies. They start with a local company. Like, oh, this company, somebody recommended me. And it's just, they burn through their money because this local company doesn't understand junk removal. And I'm gonna to get to that in just a minute, what I mean when they don't understand, because there's such important, small, such small, small little things that they don't understand, and they burn the customer's money. And we're gonna talk about those negative keywords that local advertising companies don't understand. And a lot of people hire local guys, not just, not just like um, all the ad companies um, out there, there's a group JRA for ads and Top Dog. There's a lot, there's a lot of guys who actually know how to run Google ads, but a lot of people that I talk to, Hire local guys. I'm gonna tell you what they do. And then if not having conversion tracking set up. So without conversion tracking, guys, without conversion tracking, you don't get this magic number. So to get conversion tracking, it's in my course. It's a five hour course. This phone number, Google will know if you call that phone number. And then Google counts it as a conversion. And you can actually, in Google, set how many seconds that phone call needs to be to be a conversion. So my conversions are so high because I set it to one second. So you should set it to five, five seconds for converting tracking. Now why one second, not five seconds? Because one second, it can be a telemarketer and you hang up right away, right? So you don't want to count the one second one. Five seconds, you're pretty safe on like, hey, hey, who's this? Click, okay, that's one second. Hey, who's this? Hi, I'm looking for junk removal. Five seconds is probably a safe number to- That's how you answered your phone? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and this is, has anybody heard my answering machine? It's really cool, I'll show you guys later. But uh, no, I mean, what did I say? Jen, I talked about this is Andrew, how can I help you? <laughs> Remember that one? Oh man, fuck. I was on, like, I, we got 40 phone calls a day. Wow. Yeah. And, okay. It's conversion tracking. If conversion tracking is not set up, Google will never be able to help you. And conversion tracking is probably an hour long of the video just setting up conversion tracking properly in my course. And then of course, not enough bankroll to make it through the initial data gathering phase. This is what we call the learning phase, the data collection phase, Google figuring out where they're gonna put you. By the way, is this helping guys? Is this, I mean, is this helping? Okay, so one of the most important screens guys, we're gonna start diving in now. Finally, we're gonna get to the juice. 
This is called the search terms page, okay? This is where Google shows you what people are searching, how much, what your conversion rate is for that keyword, what this keyword's costing you, how many clicks. I scroll down the list and I want you guys to see, this is my campaign. I want you guys to tell me there is a mistake within these keywords. Do you guys see what mistake there might be? There is a keyword in here I should not be bidding on that costs me money. Boom. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So now imagine you, you start a campaign, a local agency, a local advertising agency, scrap metal. He doesn't know to put scrap metal in there. He doesn't know to put metal. He doesn't know these keywords. He doesn't know to put trash, garbage, city, county. There are so many specific, so many negative keywords that local ad agencies don't know, and you end up burning money. That cost me seventy-three fucking dollars, and that was just in that one. I don't know when I caught that. It may have cost me three, four hundred, five hundred. So eventually, and then there's a uh, Baxter pickup that I would bid on. I forgot, but Baxter. We'll dive in. So good, good call, good catch. So search terms is your friend. Search terms you will look at religiously every day when running your own campaign. You will go look at every day, what did people search? What did I show up for? Do I need to, do you see how many got, this is the bottom of this by the way, but if we look at the top guys, check it out. So we have 43 clicks on junk removal. Got junk, junk removal thousand oaks, blah, blah, blah. Got junk costs. Now this is where you guys have to, this is where you guys have to start using your own gut on should we, okay, so for me, cost and pricing, I'll bid on those keywords. But do you think with somebody with a low budget, just getting the Google ads, trying to figure this game out, should they bid on keywords that have cost and pricing? Probably not, because they're most likely just literally calling for the cost and pricing. So you can restrict what you don't want to show up for, like down to the team, very, very, very detailed. So I've been on everything like cost, pricing, all of that stuff. Because at the end of the day, the average is out, you do close some of those customers. Okay, so this is just a look at search terms. Uh, as you can see, furniture removal is down here with 16 clicks. But this is just, I was running my ads in the beginning, um, and this is January 2022. So, and this is only my Ventura campaign. I haven't even started my LA location. So that gives you an idea. Right, shows you your average cost per click for these keywords, $17.32, oh no, $18. Got junk, it's cost me $24, what the fuck? Jedi junk removal, $8.44 because, now, if you have really good SEO and you're number one, you probably don't want to bid on your own keyword because you're paying for people to click your own ad, but at the same time, you're also first, um, because ads are always above organic results. Anyways. Keyword types, let's talk about keyword types. Does anybody know what this is? Google keyword types. So this is important. This is what we're gonna kind of dive deep on a little bit, is the big mistakes that local ad agencies, not dedicated junk Google ad agencies should not make this mistake, and they probably don't, but a lot of people seem to hire local ad agencies, a lot of guys. Um, if you hire like companies like JRA, Top Dog, I don't even know all the junk Google, I think Lewis is now running ads. I think Matt fit Matt. Is Matt out there? No, he's, he's, he's okay. Somewhere. Okay, never mind. I think Matt's going to be starting running Google ads for people too. Um, anyways, broad match, phrase match, exact match. Okay, we'll start with the easy one. Exact match, guys. If you were to make a campaign and you put one keyword and one keyword only, and you put this keyword as exact match in brackets, you would only and forever only show up for junk removal and nothing else. Okay. Phrase match, take it a step further. If we put in junk removal and phrase match, that one keyword and keyword only, forever and only, I will show up for, I hate junk removal. <laughs> I love junk removal. Junk removal is the best. Junk removal near me, junk removal not, do you guys get where I'm going with this? You'll show up for everything. So as you can tell, there's kind of a little bit of an art to, art to this. Broad match, you will never, ever use, ever. So, this is bizarre. If you put junk removal as a broad match, you will show up for how do I recycle pipe tubing? How do I get rid of a garbage disposal? It is, if there's another word, 
better than broad? It is more than broad. So guys, don't ever use broad match in search keywords or negative keywords. Just never use it, ever. You're gonna fine tune your campaign with praise and exact match. So these are the keyword types Google let you do. Google lets you do. Let's do a play by play. If we were to put a keyword in phrase match and exact match, the reason why we have phrase and exact is because I actually want to track how many people just type in John Google. So we're going to put this in brackets because yes, they could just type it in phrase match as well. They could just type it here, but I want a breakdown of this by itself, okay? And then if somebody types in junk removal near me, you know, it, this will all fall under junk removal. So exact match lets you get exactly those keywords. So you might want to put junk removal near me in a bracket as well. And if there's cities you'd like to see how many clicks you get, you need to make an exact match because junk removal, Simi Valley, Thousand Oaks, Malibu, Santa Ma, they will all fall under this bracket here. So, which is fine, because you want to show up for all those, but I have all the major cities that I put an exact match because I want to break down the cities and the negative keywords, guys. So, we can probably all assume, we can probably all agree that we want the negative keyword free, right? So, if we were to do the negative keyword free, we wouldn't show up for free junk removal, right? So, and the reason why you want to put it in phrase match, not broad, because free, who know, if you put a broad free, who knows what Google will stop you from showing up. Obviously, they're going to try to anything related to broad, free, broad, but don't risk it. Just put free, and then you can also put cheap, whatever you don't want to show up for. I do, it, I do bid on cheap, but if you have a smaller budget and you're trying to fine tune your Google Ads, probably just cut out cheap too. Initially, then you can bring cheap back in later if you guys don't want to have cheap customers. <laughs> but yeah, so this will prevent you from free junk removal or junk removal free. But you know what this doesn't prevent is somebody looking, types in junk removal careers, junk removal jobs. Junk. So can you kind of see where people will probably start burning money in local ad agencies? Any, any questions so far? Any questions at all? Uh, I, I missed it all. Can you repeat? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so with that being said, guys, here's kind of an example of my search keywords. Uh, campaigns paused. Obviously, this is very old, 238 conversions. But as you can see, the junk removal phrase, whatever fell under this junk removal phrase, it could have been junk removal. See, I have some exact matches because there's cities I wanted to track. But you guys can kind of see, look, this is a popular one, junk removal cost. Um, get rid of old furniture. So you guys can kind of see the phrases that are getting during those during those two months. What brought me business? Junk removal phrase, like I said, guys, that can be a lot of things. Junk removal followed by anything. So you do want to do a lot of exact matches if you want to track. Negative keywords. Do you guys see what's wrong here? You guys see what might be wrong? These broad matches. Now, we don't want to show up for cars, career, or car. You want to put these in phrase match. Okay? Because cars is too broad. I don't know. Maybe maybe that stops me showing up from um, what are those things in the water? The fucking ski? Jet, uh, ski. jet ski. Sorry, my brain. Uh, jet, maybe you don't show up for jet ski. And we take jet skis. Maybe you don't show up for trailer. This is too broad. Google takes broad way too unseriously. It's like, it's, it's, I tested it. This might be preventing you from showing up for all kinds of other stuff. So you need to be so, this is why when you start your own campaign, you have to do this very slowly. You start with a small budget and a small max, max cost per click. We'll get into that towards the end. Because all these keywords are gonna come through that you don't want to bid on and you have to add them as a negative keyword and monitor your campaign for about a month if you guys do this yourself. Every day, you're gonna see little things that come up. You're like, ah, oh, I just bid on this keyword. Crap, I don't wanna bid on uh, bag pickup. And then you put bag or bagster 
because you don't have the ability to do bachelor's. What's up? So I've, I've had companies actually call me in the last couple of days about selling you keywords and things like that. So selling you keywords? Yeah, like they, they want to Or what? They, they, they want to be able to, to um, I guess that's their advertising. Selling you keywords for Google Ads? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No, no, no. So you, I mean, in your course, you do kind of help. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I 100% go through. Like, it's a, you'll be a, you'll be a pro by the time. We're, we're scratching the surface of this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn it, I have to turn this on. Okay, so, um, broad match, guys. Now, that just means if you're not going to do broad match, you have to religiously monitor your keywords and add a keyword that comes up, like scrap metal might come up, but try to think of every negative keyword. And in my course, I have a list of negative keywords, and I, I go over it, and we go over, we cover most of all the negative keywords, because I go through my campaign for like three weeks, and show you the keywords that show up. Like, oh fuck, forgot about this one, forgot about this one. And then I build a keyword list, a negative keyword list. So that is keywords, guys, and that's where most people burn their money, okay? And just to give you an example of where people burn their money when I logged in to check their campaign and they hired a local, camp, a local company, there was garbage, they were showing up for garbage, and they were showing up for trash. Can you imagine blowing $100 a day on garbage and trash keywords? Another popular one that local ad agencies don't know is city. City pickup. Do we want to pay for the keyword city? No. How about county pickup? Bulky item pickup. In my experience, is a bad keyword because you think it's the city coming to get a free bulky item. They are just blowing their money because these ad agencies don't know that trash is customers who think it's gonna be free or garbage or city, county, Baxter, um, scrap, scrap metal, recycle, dump, landfill. You've got their career, job. There's hundreds of keywords that you have to protect yourself against or you're just gonna burn money. And that's why we start slowly. We're gonna talk about how to start slowly with an ad agency. Ad agencies don't do this. They have their negative keyword list, yes, They'll dump it into yours. They'll they'll clone a campaign and do yours. But the problem is, there's just keywords in each city that we don't think about that you burn through. And this and this is just I'm talking about like junk removal Google ad companies. They'll just clone your campaign and they'll just expect that it's just going to work perfectly. And yeah, sometimes it might, but sometimes it doesn't. And you really just need to monitor it religiously if you want a perfect campaign. So. Let's talk about bidding. You have two major types. There's a couple others, but we don't care about them. You have maximized clicks. So maximized clicks means exactly what it means. It means it's going to try to get you as many clicks as possible based on how much money you're willing to spend. So they'll try to throw you to the top. Google, I think, shows two local service ads. Do you guys know what Google local services is? Does anybody know what Google local services is? We'll talk about it in a minute. So Google local services tends to be first, and it shows two people, and you pay for that as well. And then below that, you have Google ads, which it also rotates two or three, three Google ads companies. And then sometimes it'll show the map pack, and then you get to the organic listings where Ricardo likes to play. What's up? Um, when you say local services, that's the same thing as Google Guaranteed? Or yes, something? Google Guaranteed, Google local services, um, we're gonna talk about that too. Um, generally, it's been more expensive for me. Google local, Google local services has been more expensive. I get way, still use Google local services, give it a try, because it's a one click, forget, and it just, it runs. You can set how much you're willing to pay, and if it works out, it works out great. I got way better results with Google Ads. Astronomical better. Um, I stopped doing Google Ads, Google local services towards the end. Um, it just got too expensive. It was like, I was paying 90 bucks a phone call. Well, I, I stopped it uh, yeah. a few months ago, so yeah, I know. Yeah, and Google Ads, as you can see, you can really fine tune. So, but it takes time. So, maximize clicks, guys. We're gonna try to get you as many clicks as possible with the amount of money you're spending. They're gonna rotate you in those three ads. The more you spend, the more you show up, the higher you'll show up, because they also have ads at the bottom of the page under the 10 organic results. They have another three. So. But like nobody goes down there, right? Target CPA is Google's 
magical algorithm that we'll never truly know and understand, but it's Google trying to hit this magic number for you. You can set this magic number. You can set what you want your target CPA to be. So you can set $10. You'll never get it. You'll never show up. So what you want to do is try to figure out what the market's paying, and you'll my target CPA is set to 55. Now, can I set it to 60 or 70? Probably, and show up more often? Yes, but you want Google to try to be somewhat smart after you've collected data and fine-tuned your ads. Um, you want to switch this because then Google really tries to understand, okay, and this is, this is how sophisticated I do know Google is. Because I, I see it, Google like, notifies you. All right, so from Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m., we're going to increase our bid because we know more people on Sunday between 4 and 6 are searching. So we increase your cost per click. Um, so you may pay a little bit more per lead, but tomorrow on Monday, we're going to drop it to, and it'll add, whatever the fuck they do with their algorithm, you eventually want to switch to target CPA, but you can't switch to target CPA unless you have data. Data costs money. Data costs time, and you're going to be here for one or two months manually managing your campaign, and then you can switch to target CPA. Target cost per acquisition, target cost per action. Um, but that's Google's magic, which you do want to switch to after we do maximize clicks. So does it take two months after? So we have to be in it a while before you Depends on how much money you're willing to spend, but I'd say two months. If you're willing to spend 100 bucks a day, probably a month. Um, but we're going to start at like 50 bucks a day. In my course, I think we started maybe even 20, 30 bucks a day. We ramp up slowly and we slowly increase. The ma okay, so maximize clicks tries to get you as much clicks as possible. So there's a setting under maximize clicks called set max cost per click. Meaning, how much are you willing to spend on a click? So if we go here, right here, Junk removal, $18.23 on average. You know, like the, maybe I was first position, maybe I was second. You can set your max cost per click for your entire campaign that you're willing to pay. And we start as low as $5. Now, are you gonna get shit with $5? Probably not, but it's gonna give you an opportunity to see what people are searching so that you can protect yourself and add negative keywords. So it's all about fine tuning. So. That's that spike. Right. Yeah, that's well. That's Google's magic spike. Google is saying, "Hey, I was on target CPA, so that spiked to three hundred dollars." Google is saying, "Hey, I'm going to risk some phone calls for you at this ridiculous price because I'm going to average it out the next day." So um, you kind of have to trust Google at that point, but you want to wait till your campaign's perfect. So at the end of the day, guys, how do we win on Google? Dedicate a landing pages per ad group if you can do that, okay? So if you can build one landing page like mine, and you guys saw, you guys saw this landing page. Check it out. This landing page, I teach you how to, we clone my landing page. We clone it. In my course, we clone it together using leadpages.net. 50 bucks a month, 14 day free trial. Click my link in the video description. No, I'm just kidding. But anyways, uh, no, for real, not. Just go to leadpages.net. They're the cheapest, best. Um, and I teach you how to set up the call tracking, um, conversion tracking, set all this up, and then um, imagine if you guys have photos, try to get a crew photo of you cutting a hot tub, a crew photo of you carrying your furniture, um, crew photo of you busting down a fence, whatever the ad group, custom, hot tub, furniture, junk removal, and general family photo, just at least those three would be a great start. Um, but with that being said, Dedicated landing pages per ad group would help. You don't have to do this in the beginning. I have one landing page with a family photo. You saw it. it worked out great for me, okay? Um, careful keyword selection, okay? So this means we're gonna bid on the keywords that we only want to bid on. So junk removal pricing, junk removal cost, cost of junk, maybe just keep, maybe just in phrase match, we put the negative keywords, cost, price, pricing. Maybe we don't bid on anything that has cost and pricing in it just to kind of protect yourself of price shoppers. Then when things get going, you can add those back. I bid on those keywords because you can, you, you know, you can sell some price shoppers. Uh, aggressive negative keywords. We go through this in my course. It takes time, okay? Um, 
Do not ever hire a local ad agency. You will get burned. Unless they truly understand junk removal. And I guess you get, what you can do is pop quiz them and be like, yo, what's 10 negative keywords in my business you would put right now? If trash, garbage, city, county, and free, do not make those first five keywords, don't hire them. Okay? So, and bulky item might be something you want to protect yourself. Every bulky item phone call I got was generally somebody who thought it was the city with a free bulky item pickup. So, jobs, careers, um, company, um, scrap, metal, landfill, recycle, all kinds of keywords. You, you guys will see in my five hour course what pops up. Um, avoid, avoid pricing. Monitor search terms every single day. That was the search term screen. Google at the end of the day, actually it's kind of, it's real time I think, shows you what people are searching in real time. And you can immediately be like, fuck, I forgot that negative keyword and add it. Um, start with maximize clicks and each week slowly increase your max cost per click. So, what you want to do is we're going to start with the bidding strategy called Maximize Clicks. Okay, we're going to set our daily budget to 50, and we're going to set our max CPC at $5. Now, you'll probably get nothing. You might get, you know, maybe some, the people who scroll down and go to the, the next set of ads, maybe you're the very last ad, but you can at least start seeing what people are searching and protect yourself. Then next week, you increase your max cost per click to $10 or $7. Watch, monitor the keywords. Then next week, you do 10, then 12, then 15, and then eventually, eventually, you get to $20. You set your max cost per click to 20. Um, that is kind of the market of what we're paying on average per junk removal click. It's pretty ridiculous, but think about it. Every three clicks is generally a phone call. Every phone call takes us two, two, call, two calls to close, and your average job size is 550. The math works out. So, now, running the campaign yourself. Now, this is where things get, this is where things get tricky, because I get people who call me all the time, they're like, Andrew, I just tried X, Y, Z, X company, I tried Y company, I tried Z company, and they hop. From, I'm not gonna name any of them, but they hop from junk removal advertising companies. ClickSkeek, they, you know, like, Andrew, ClickSkeek didn't work for me. And I made a video dedicated to this on why it's potentially not working. And I've only come up with one solution. Is, number one, if it's not working with those people, the, it's probably, you suck on the phone. <laughs> uh, you suck on the phone. Um, Probably blowing your budget way too fast because they have they do have a limit and the data collection phase is very expensive and they probably just get burnt out over the first month month or two because most ad agencies know this shit but they don't care as much as I do when I was running my campaign even with ClickSeek I was in monitoring my campaign daily and making adjustments it would piss Ed off it piss him off but eventually my campaign average is 4.1x I put in 250 I got back 1.1. So, the long story short, guys, is if you go with an ad agency that does run junk removal ads, theoretically it should work. I have a video that you need to watch that explains if you're gonna hire one of those ad companies, watch that video, but at the end of the day, nobody's gonna care about your campaign as much as you. And it's really easy, once you finish, it's set it and forget it. I have not touched my ads in two years. Don't touch them, they just run. So the first four months, I lived and breathed my ads. But once you're done, they run forever. You set it to target CPA, Google learns. So I have, when I say I haven't touched my ads in two years, I haven't touched them in two years. They just run. I, the only thing that changes is my budget sometimes. So what, what about the, don't you think, trends will change, keyword trends will change, do you monitor that or you? No, no, because at the end of the day, Google knows your target CPA. I'm, they know the cute, jump people are, at the end of the day, people are searching junk removal. Yeah. Get rid of furniture, junk removal, hot tub removal. Right. The same, now is there, is there, is there a hundred keywords in between? Yes, but they're all, so Google knows, with all the data it has over the past year, two years, it knows, I need to give Andrew phone calls at 55 bucks. Okay, now the only thing that can change is you will get less phone calls because the market is now saying it's 75. 
And that's where it sucks. That's where shit tends, that's where it starts to suck is it might be getting more expensive. But you can slowly increase and find out where you start getting more clicks and more phone calls and you can start figuring out what it's gonna cost you. Um, but at the end of the day, running your campaign yourself is probably the best. Um, or working really closely with the ad agency and showing them this, showing me like, hey, give me access, I wanna monitor and work together because um, at the end of the day, guys, it is, it's really easy to run it yourself. It's kind of, the setup process is kind of annoying, but this is how I would win. Now, obviously, putting this into practice is a little bit harder than, you know, just all of this. It, it is a little bit of work, but it's going to be worth it. So, that is, if you want my free Google Maps quotes, talk to me after. Um, it is completely free. There's no little pitch or stuff. It's 100% free. Um, so, yeah. Where can find it? Yeah, I Yo, where can I find it? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I'll give you I'll give you guys access. It's, it's in my private community, school.com. So now before we jump into Facebook, guys, did that help a little? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, okay. Yeah. Now, so questions before we jump into Facebook, guys. Open Q and A real quick. For the big companies that are putting in junk removal or whatever, what makes it different for them that they get the job or they get they get the conversion? So, what makes it different? So we got got junk here. What was your question? What makes like I search junk removal, and they're paying for ads. I'm paying for ads. Correct. What makes them show up higher? Or so the only thing that makes them show up higher is they're willing to spend the money. That's it. It's so I could technically. This is a bidding war, right? We're all saying how much we're willing to spend per click and we're fighting for this top position. We're bidding. So at the end of the day, there is a limit to where we're eventually gonna be like, okay, we are not gonna pay $50 a click. We will lose money. So there is a max bid that we're all willing to pay. Now, it seems to sit around $20 a click. That is where the market is willing to pay right now. And if your conversion rate is 30%, right? If your conversion rate, just do the math. So, um, Conversion rate means uh, you can't sell 761 clicks. So 761 people clicked, this many people actually called. So the higher your conversion rate, the better. But at the end of the day, it really is we're bidding against each other. Now, ad copy does make a difference, by the way. Uh, having good ad copy. Um, I don't think you... So in my course, I show you my ad copy. We go over all of my ad copy. But... Ad copy does make a difference when I have good ad copy to get better clicks. But yeah, at the end of the day, man, we're just, it's just, if you want top position, you gotta pay $20 a click. And even with 1-800-GOT-JUMP paying $20 a click and I'm paying $20 a click, they're gonna rotate me. They try to rotate, they, they rotate us, right? So to give us all even share. It, I had a, real quick, Matt, I had, um, I had something I wanted to test that I never did test. I thought it would be genius to have two so I got two positions. I was gonna start a sister company. And yes, I'd be bidding against myself, but if I can take two positions at a time, so Jedi jump removal and then whatever, Anakin jump removal, you know? Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, what's, Matt, what's up? Hey, I was wondering about, do you know anything about, doesn't the price of what you pay for clicks change based on the amount of people that you have on the platform? Yeah, so we actually uh, kind of discussed that, um, right here, this cost per click, especially if you're using target CPA, Google will adjust at certain times of the day how much they're willing to bid for you. So like Sunday, I give an example, Sunday 4 to 6 p.m., they might be willing, Google will increase how much your, how much they're willing to spend. Like, hey, I might spend $19 uh, a click Sunday between four to six, and it'll show you in your Google account, and then tomorrow, between two and four, we're gonna bid $15 because whatever math they're doing to get this target CPA, but, um, oh shit, I was going the wrong way. This target CPA, wherever the target CPA is, right here. So Google will fluctuate what you spend in order to hit this target CPA, but what you're asking is, does your ad copy affect what you're paying? 
I don't, okay, so nobody truly knows, Google doesn't give their algorithm away, right? But what, what I think is no, but it will affect how many clicks you get and your conversion will suck. And then Google's gonna be like, oh, Google's gonna try to optimize and be like, oh, since this ad suck, we gotta spend more money. So you wanna try to get your ad copy good, so Google might spend more money to get you towards the top, so short answer, maybe yes. Okay, that was a little workaround we had to do right there. Um, Cause yeah, if your ad copy's bad, and your landing page is bad, and you're not getting clicks or conversions, Google's gonna have a really hard time placing you in the mix, and their only answer is gonna be like, oh, this fucker's gonna spend more money. So really try to fine tune your, your, your conversion, get your conversion rate as high as you can, have good ad copy. But yeah, any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, so is it possible to set up the campaign for just one keyword? Like say the only thing I wanna do, for example, is hot tubs. Is it possible? Absolutely. So that way, that's the only thing. That's Absolutely. One hundred percent. In my course, we start with just junk removal. We start with one campaign, junk removal campaign. Then you work your way to furniture, hot tub. But you can absolutely start with hot tub. Now, are you going to get a fuckload of search results like junk removal does? No. But you can absolutely focus on hot tub removal, yeah. spa removal, hot tub removal, jacuzzi removal. Whatever. Because my, my biggest worry was that, like, say the conversion is fifty-five dollars, I get a hundred-dollar job just for like one small little pickup or something. Like oh that. yeah, that, that, but it aver your average job size averages out and takes all your jobs into account. I get single item calls all the time. It absolutely sucks. Um, I probably only closed 25% of the single item removals, which is why I was going to start doing loss leaders, like got junk. I was gonna start doing loss leaders. Um, Loss leader guys, as you do, single items are a lot cheaper because you get them in your database, you can remarket to them later, you can ask them to yard sign in the yard. Um, they might tell friends, they might refer you, you can drive a truck around the neighborhood, you can do door hangers. There's a lot of other benefit to a single item where you take a loss. I was at a point in my company where we're averaging 80 grand a month, and I was about to start doing loss leaders, meaning single item pickups. I was about to be the asshole that you guys hate and doing $49, $49 $99 um, single item pickups because not only do you get the advertising in the neighborhood from your truck, you can do five door hangers up, five door hangers down. You can ask them to the yard sign in the yard. They're now in your database. They might refer a customer. You can see the benefits long term might outweigh the loss. But um, to answer your question, um, single item hot tub removal, yes, you can do that. And there's no avoiding single item removals. You could probably bid against. You could probably avoid furniture removal and appliance removal campaign ad groups, because generally speaking, it's usually appliance removal and furniture removal that has the single items, so you can just stick for junk removal. Um, but yeah, single items is kind of the name of the game. Sucks. I hate those phone calls. You know, hey, remember every time I got a single item? Like, God damn it! Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, load up, get to mention, trash for you, fucking. Any other questions before we go to Facebook? So has there been any improvements in the Google local service ads or are they still do this? So I stopped running them in my last month before I sold the company, November, December. It's just too expensive. And this was performing 10 times better. So no no improvement since yeah. the cash? Yeah, it's, so you can could, you could limit how much you're willing to spend for a phone call. But you know, I had it on maximized phone calls. So yeah, and we'll actually we'll talk about Google local services too. Uh, Kevin. You had a question? Yeah, you're uh, using AI for copyright. What are your feelings about that? Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, add your human element to it. You're completely fine. Yeah, those AI copywriter uh, detectors and stuff. Yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. Google's not going to be all like butthurt about that. Um, but that's a question more Matt would know better than me. But I think if you take what it spits out and you add some human to it, just change a couple things, I think you're fine. Any other my man, D I, Dean. Yes. Uh, that's, that's my middle name. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, I was going to ask there's a local uh, Google guarantee. Mm -hmm. Is it true that, let's say, if more people get on the Google guarantee list, that it becomes more competitive for in terms of who they raise the price? Oh, that's, 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 that's what's that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's an absolute, it's the same. It's the same thing. We're bidding against each other. We're willing to spend. So there's actually two two things. How much you're willing to pay per phone call and weekly budget. <laughs> on Google, it's daily budget. On Google Local Services, it's weekly budget. It's the same shit. We're all bidding against each other how much we're willing to pay for the phone call. So 
at the end of the day, there's going to be a limit that we're all willing to pay. Even got junk has a number that they're willing to pay. So it will level out and balance out. Um, the national average for me has stayed $55. Target CPA cost per lead on Google. My local services phone calls got up to $80 to $90 per phone call. And that's in, I'm in LA. And I know a lot of people in different states are having this problem too. Um, Google Local Services. Now, why is Google Local Services more expensive? The answer is really simple. Do you guys know why? It's easier. People give up here, they go to Google Local Services because it's easy. One click, you're good. You get the Google Guarantee badge, you just send in your COI, stipulated insurance, and boom, you're, you're at the top. So there is way more people fighting here than here. People will stick with this for about three months, they give up, they burned all their money, and they say, fuck Google. So my theory, guys, is this will all balance out soon. I think the national average will stick around 55, so um, some I know some people in different states that tell me they're paying like 75, 90, some people have, some people even told me if they hit 150, but they just aren't running the Google apps, right? Um, so I think if you guys just stick it out, Wait for all the people to flood into Google. They're going to fall out soon, and you guys are going to stick around, and you guys will win on Google. So that was Google, guys. Any other questions? I hope that helps. I have one more. Yeah. I noticed on the graph wherever you have the cost of acquisition, like it would go up and down. Whenever you're noticing that it goes up super high, do you pause that? No. No. Because so, I noticed that it would go up, and then suddenly you would have it go all the way down. So I was wondering yeah. if you're pausing them. This is Google trying to do its magic, okay? This is Google trying to do its target CPA and get you at $55. So you got to remember, you got to average Google out over the course of a month. Never take Google over the day, the week, or two weeks. You take Google over the month. You average it out. Google's trying to do its magic here. So what Google is saying is, I'm going to screw you today to help you out in the next few days. So you're going to have, I promise you, to be about a year for you to finally get used to it in my gut. Because you will make money by the end of the month. Sometimes I'm breaking even for the first two weeks of the month with payroll and just ad spend is kind of aggressive and workers' comp pay, whatever your expenses are, but towards the last two weeks of the month is where you really start to like, I would start to profit. And I didn't, I don't have good credit, so I was paying everything, employees up front, I dumped and gas, two trucks, no, it was, I was paying all this shit up front, gas and dump fees, and it really like stings sometimes, but it's always, towards the end of the month, you will, get your 3x minimum. So if you put in 20,000, you will get 60 grand back. If you do that, you will. If you close 50% of your phone calls and you follow my course, you will get a minimum of 3x return. Um, on good months, 5x. So, can I answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Got one more guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you mentioned earlier that you don't want to send them to your website. But if you're getting all these clicks, wouldn't you want to no. Yes. The website boost the SEO. So why why would you hide uh, these clicks from going to your website to help you out there at the same time? Yeah, there's a, there's actually a, a lot of benefit from sending it to your website. You could put a Facebook pixel on your website. You could retarget the customers. There's astronomical benefits to sending it to your website. The problem is, is it's too complicated um, for you to send it to your website, turn it into a converting customer, and setting up conversion tracking on your website. Now, if you think you could do all of that properly with my course and set up a separate page on your website, or even if you send it to your homepage, and your homepage is good, like some people on their homepage, they just got too much going on, and if you can set up conversion tracking on your homepage, and you can make it simple and to the point where you would want to send customers there, yes, there's astronomical benefit to sending them to your website rather than a separate domain slash landing page. And the biggest benefit is yes, Google will see the paid traffic and then the organic traffic and Google sees what you're doing. But also, you can set up a Facebook pixel, which we'll talk about in the next one. Facebook pixel, very powerful. You can retarget people who have been to your website on Facebook. But short answer, absolutely, you would want to do your homepage. But most people's website is not good to send a Google customer. They'll just leave because they'll get confused with everything going on. 
but he so, had, but he had like several, like doing separate pages. Yeah. Like, and then you know you have like book now on that page. Yeah. Wouldn't that be like a landing page? Yes. Yeah. So you can. Yes. I show you guys how to do it on a domain because most people they have WordPress set up. They have um, some Wix, WordPress. Their their website is done by an agency, and it's just not. There's not a, a, uni, a universal way for me to teach people how to set up conversion tracking on their platform because their website's completely separate from them, right? So for me to teach them how to build a simple landing page is much easier because at the end of the day, you're sending Google customers to this landing page and you need a phone call. But are there side benefits to having it on the website? Absolutely, absolutely. You can always forward it to your website, but he's talking about traffic. Yeah. Traffic, yep, right. yep. Kevin? Are you using subdomains for those pages? No, you can simply, so JediJunkMovableLosAngeles.com is one of my pages, is my domain for the main junk removal page. You can do JediJunkMovableLosAngeles slash hot tub. So that's, so you don't need to do a subdomain, which is hot tub dot. Right. So no subdomain needed. So I have a question. Um, when I was scaling up iHaul, before I went all into SEO, I was doing Google Ads in mm -hmm. 2021. I spent, I spent 250. Oh I, shit, you, you're a big spender too. I had my phone turned off the whole year. So what I said uh -huh. was I said custom conversion tracking. And uh -huh. The conversion was the landing page that they go to after they book online. Okay. So I would tell Google that my custom conversion is, is online booking. Online booking by by you know tracking the landing. Page. So you didn't do phone calls at all. I did one phone call and I did four X. Four. I did I did nine sixty four in sales. All wow! One custom conversion was from just online booking. That's that's, that's I insane. I did with zero employees. That's that's insane. I definitely talked to Matt about that because I I never. That's crazy. That's awesome. Oh. I, I thought I was doing it wrong though because when I started, I was getting online bookings for twenty to fifty. Online bookings for twenty to fifty. Uh -huh. So at the end of the year, it was like 100, 150 and I thought it was bad. Yeah. I guess I mean a hundred bucks for an online booking is. is yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what you pay. Yeah, fifty fifty five bucks for a phone call, but times two. Times two. But if you're getting an actual online booking, now the only difference is, is when you do show up the online booking, do you close that, right? I mean, but usually it's yeah. nine. We close in person ninety five percent of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's pretty. That's bananas and pancake. <laughs> um, anyways, any other questions before we, do you guys, are you guys over this? Do you guys want me to go to Facebook ads too? Okay. Okay, awesome. Just so I want to talk, wow, I don't have, yeah. I, sorry. I thought I was going to be done in two hours, so it's probably about right. Let's jump into Facebook ads, guys. Facebook ads is probably the best way to start. For sure. Before Google ads. Uh, Google ads is... Google Ads is probably the best way to scale and forever have an ever-ending river flowing of leads, hot leads now. I want junk removal today or tomorrow and the, the highest paying customers. Google Ads should be your long-term goal, right? If you want longevity in your company, it's going to be SEO and Google Ads, okay? You want to have both. You want to have leads from all sources, but Google Ads will be this never-ending river. If you get perfected, you can always depend on having extra extra money coming in from Google Ads. But yes, you put in 10, you get 30 back. You should be getting 40. Guaranteed. Over the course, you'll have some bad months, but over the course of the year, you will make money. So Facebook ads is a little bit different. I look at Facebook as these are these are gonna be cold, warm leads. These are people who are just passively scrolling on Facebook and they see you like, hey, junk removal, right? So some of them might want junk removal right away, but in my experience of doing junk, uh, Facebook ads, you have to nurture them, okay? A hot lead from Google is an immediate result. You will close them immediately. Facebook, generally, I have some people who close immediately, but one lady, one guy, he was a lawyer, he saw my ad, it took about a month or two, $12,000 hoarders you know, all through Facebook, talking through Facebook. So it takes more nurturing, it takes more time, and you're gonna be messaging with them through Facebook. So the beauty about Facebook, though, is it's so easy. It's so easy. And let's just go through. Okay, so 
here is one of my. <laughs> oh, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? We're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. Get drink. I'm just gonna wrap it up. You want to finish this? Set? Go finish it. Finish it. Oh shit! Okay. No, you're good. Okay. Break. Just do a break. Oh, oh, do you, yeah, you just want to do a quick break? Yeah. Yeah, let's do a little break. And then we'll just jump in a Facebook app. There you go. All right, guys. So, uh, everyone, give a round of applause for Andrew. So, we're going to take a five minute break and we're going to do some wrap up Facebook ads. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Like I said earlier, Facebook ads, uh, you have to nurture more. You have to talk to them through Messenger. It is a lot more annoying, but. It, it, if you're willing to talk on your phone and message and kind of like, and some of you guys can afford a, a call agent like I have hired from the Philippines. I have all my entire call my call center would message with them for me. They would call them. They would handle it for me. Um, you're gonna have to do it on your own, but you can get a lot of leads from Facebook, and it's just you have to nurture them more. We call it nurturing in the marketing world. You know, buttering them up. Oh, Stacy, uh, I'd love to help you. Yeah, whatever. So, um, Google, they call you. I need my jump removed now. Like, it's always like that. It's so many same days. But, anyways, um, let's look at an example of an ad. There's two things you can do in the Facebook world run a campaign and boost a post. Both of them work great. Um, we're going to talk about a campaign and a, a Facebook campaign, and we're gonna talk about Facebook boosts. So, here is a Facebook ad that I ran, 192 likes, one person was like, oh my goodness, uh, but uh, so with all the emoji reactions, 44 comments, 38 shares, a lot, you'd be surprised, a lot of people, like a lot of people on Facebook, they'll just reshare this. Like, these aren't my friends. These are random strangers who reshare this because Stacy was like, oh my God, I'm gonna share, and she shares it, right? My minimum was 125 in Ventura County, okay guys? Um, this is a Ventura County app. Uh, LA is 150. So this is an example. Uh, basically the Seymour is a, a nice little paragraph. Um, let me see. Ah, I'll pull it up later. But it basically says, uh, do your junk removal, we'd love to help you, you know. I can, if you guys want my ad, I can send you the whole ad later, you can message me. But with this Facebook ad, okay, I set my Facebook ads to, I, I tried so many different Facebook ads, guys. Um, I'll tell you right now, the best result that I've got is a family photo or literally a picture of trash, of junk in the driveway. Those are the two best performing photos. A crew photo, a family photo, something that really shows you guys, even if you're like moving the couch, smiling, a family photo, or literally a photo of trash in the garage are the two best performing photos I've had. Don't do videos, photos just seem to work better with Facebook ads. I set this campaign to $20 a day, 181 people messaged me. I don't remember how many conversions I got from it, but it cost me $3.83 per lead. Now, I did not close 90, 50%. I did not close um, 90 people, okay? The conversions are way less on Facebook. Um, but I definitely made my money back. So this is an example of a campaign ad. And this is all you wanna do. This is it, the end. So, and you can experiment with what you say, and there's two, there's three ways to do Facebook ads. You can do the magic message button, where it literally will message you on your Facebook page. You can do a lead form, which Facebook has built-in lead forms where you can start um, capturing data. So it asks first name, last name, phone number, email, what junk do you need removed? Now, when you do a lead form, of course you're gonna get better quality leads. You're gonna you're gonna get like uh, get rid of the people who aren't as serious because these people actually filled out a form. In my experience, I like the message leads. Um, the form leads do work. Um, you do get better quality data because they're actually filling out a form on Facebook. It pops up a little form, and then she. Um, she 
can put in that information. And um, the third way is you can send them outside to a landing page, like we do with Google. That is a big no-no in Facebook world. You could do it, you could get results, but you don't want to take people off Facebook, right? They're on Facebook, stalking their exes, whatever they're doing, right? <laughs> um, or looking at family photos, whatever. Lately, I've been caught up on the Facebook videos. You guys seen the Facebook videos? Yeah. yeah. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> so, anyways, point being, guys, that's an example of a campaign. Um, if you do have any questions about how to run a campaign, I can actually show you later after this. I don't want to talk too much because we can go forever. But that is an example of a campaign. At the end of the day, family photo, choose the send message button, put an enticing offer, starting ads, or get a, a, a message for a quote, a message for an estimate. You guys know the difference between estimates and quotes, right? Never say quote over the phone, say estimate. So, uh, message for an estimate, and it's that simple. Setting up a Facebook ad. The demographics that you target, please tell me I put it in here. I did not, okay. Um, so if we go to edit this ad. Come on, internet. Yes, the internet's working. So, this is the actual ad, this is the ad group, this is the campaign. If we go to the ad group, this is where you set your targeting preferences. It's really this simple, guys. You only want to target Facebook, by the way, so when you set your preferences up, um, you'll see that, um, where is it? Only Facebook, okay, maybe it's actually under campaign settings. It's gonna say, do you wanna show this on Instagram? Do you wanna show this here? Do you wanna show this? You only wanna show it in the Facebook feed. So there's gonna be a bunch of options that says Instagram stories, Instagram. Facebook feed is your highest converting, just stick with Facebook feed. Facebook feed only. Um, I'll try to find it in just a second. So um, maximize number of conversions, but what I really wanted to show you guys is the demographics. Okay, location. Once it loads, I'm targeting only my location, Ventura County. But as you can see, all genders, I have no detailed targeting. I'm only targeting 30 to 65 and up. That's it. Because only the people who want to click this, there's no reason to find, there's no reason to fine tune on Facebook. There's no reason to get like detailed with your targeting where I'm only looking for realtors. You can, you can try that. But in Facebook, if you have an offer, make sure your offer is obvious. Make it clear, we are junk removal, starts at 125, put a picture of trash, you and your family or your crew, movies and trash. If the offer is clear, then there's no reason to tar target everybody in your local, I was in Oxnard, Senior Valley, these are all the major cities in my area. So your campaign can literally um, be that broad, okay, with, with uh, Facebook. So you can be pretty broad on Facebook. And then let's see placement. Bada boom. Manual placement. Here we go. Facebook feed. That's it. I don't think I have anything else. So you just, I mean, I tried a lot of this shit, guys. I have the best luck with Facebook feed. Um, you know, so you can see, you can literally put your <laughs> messenger stories, Facebook stories. Um, Facebook feed works best for me. So it's that simple to do a Facebook ad. Um, does, did you have a question back there? Yeah, do you ever let Google choose where they can place it? Like ever, ever Are we talking about Google ads? I mean, uh, Facebook, Facebook ads? ads yeah. Do we? Do I let them choose where to place it? Yeah, like sometimes we boost, uh, boost an ad or tell you. Uh, I think it's called like Facebook Advanced option or something. Yeah. It like lets the Facebook algorithm. No. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I never use that option. Um, campaigns are pretty simple. Um, so what I recommend is do a family photo or a crew photo, do a trash photo. Don't do videos. I never got good conversions on videos. Video, videos just didn't work out for me. Do a, do a family photo and a trash photo. Do the same copy, same text, same offer. Send, mine was 125 bucks, send message. Split test the two, $10 a day. This is the beautiful thing about Facebook is you can start cheap and just let it run. 
It's going to cost you 300 bucks a month. If you split test two different ads, it's going to cost you 600 bucks a month. If you make your offer clear, you will make your money back. If you don't respond, but the thing is, is you have to be on, you have to be on Facebook. I had to talk to 181 people, guys. Um, actually, no. Um, I started initially, then I trained my, then I got my agents uh, access to my Facebook. They do my phone calls. They do my Facebook ads. They do Facebook Messenger ads. They do emails. They do my everything. Um, eventually, you brought, you could probably increase this to 50 bucks a day. And then just literally get one agent who just strictly handles responding to Facebook messages for you. Um, but uh, yeah, so that is um, Facebook campaigns, okay? That's running a Facebook campaign. We're going to talk about Boost. This is the quickest way to get started, and this is the way I recommend all of you get started um, before running a campaign. Um, <laughs> oh, no. oh, yeah, okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? So I'm gonna show you guys an example of a boost that I did that did okay, but it's a video. Welcome to Jedi Jump Your local jump point is specialist. Is your jump point you to the dark side? Do you take jump, trash, old droids, anything else? Where is Darth Vader? What are you waiting for? I'm Darth Vader. <laughs> oh, look at my little oh, oh, So now you think that that would have converted well. Yeah. No. Yeah, um, it worked, but the family photo and pictures of trash did better. I'm assuming it's because people don't want to watch a video. Um, I don't know. Real quick, I boosted many other posts. Um, one trick with boosting a post is you will make a post on your business page, your personal page. I'd recommend probably trying your personal page first. And then you post something like a family photo, crew photo, we do jump removal, and you boost that post. I'm showing this boost as an example of bad quality and what will happen when you boost a post. But the trick with boosting a post, Matt and JoJo does this really well. I use them as an example all the time because they are the Facebook kings and queen, king and queen. What you wanna do is make one good post and you're going to boost that post over and over and over, forever and ever and ever. And that, that post will eventually get tons of likes Tons of comments, and you're gonna get nasty comments here and there. Just some weirdos are just gonna say some. Just constantly delete those ones and just keep reboosting. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm showing you this boost, the results because <laughs> you saw the performance on my last ad, how good it did, and then we're gonna show you bad performance. I don't know why this didn't perform well. I thought I was a fantastic actor, but I guess not. So if you look at the boost. And boosting is so easy because you literally just make one good quality post and you keep boosting it over and over. And you just boost for $10, right? So I spent 300 on this. And it got 11 messages, right? Bizarre. I think I made my money back. Um, I think I did make my money back in this store. I think I did get one job. One, but $27 per lead. Yeah, so that's high. So I just wanted to show you, don't do a commercial video. It doesn't perform as well as a photo, family photo. You just smiling in front of some trash does astronomically better. I don't know why. I'm still trying to figure out why because I thought that was a good video. My only guess is it's too professional. Maybe people just don't want to see a commercial. Maybe they just want to see a picture of trash. Like, oh yeah, I need trash removed and that's just more obvious. Um, but yeah, so that is a Facebook boost. But what you want to do is, let me see if I can pull up an example. On the Facebook video, do you know if it auto-played on people's feeds? Yeah, I think it did, but with no audio. Okay. Auto-plays with no audio. Um, but no, I guess I didn't. I don't put the example. Okay, so what you want to do though, guys, is you want to take this right here. Instead of making this a campaign, make a post like this, and when you post it, it's gonna say boost. And you're gonna boost it over and over, okay? Boost it, and then I would recommend doing like 20 bucks a boost, and keep boosting it. It's gonna compound like interest. It's gonna get more effective the more you boost it, because you're gonna get more comments and more likes and more shares over time. But 
make sure before you boost a post, you do the social media stuff we talked about earlier. Make your, your become your brand. Look legit on your Facebook page. Have all your ducks in a row before doing this. But if you do ten to twenty dollars per boost, I promise you guys, um, the boost is going to do is going to spread out to your friends and people in your area, the city, and especially when you guys start adding hundred people a day of realtors and people in local community groups, that boost is only going to get more effective. If you can imagine, it's going to boost it to your network and your network's network. So if your network is friends, realtors in your area, and other people in local community groups, that boost is going to be so much more effective. You guys can literally start doing this, boosting and boosting, and eventually you can just put this on auto and boost like 600 bucks a month, and this will just be consistently money in the future. Now, what I say in the future is Google ads are now. This takes time. Some leads will come through right away. Well, you have to nurture them, but when you start posting for about them, I like to say with Facebook ads, when you run Google ads, you get leads immediately. When you run Facebook ads, the first month, you don't get any of the leads into the next month. So your first month of running Facebook ads, in my experience now, there's always exceptions to the rule where you will get some immediate. But if you consistently boost and run your Facebook ads, you will get the leads that you're nurturing the following month or the next month. So it'll start to stack. If you, if you know what I mean. So the second month, you'll get those leads, and then so on and so on. Eventually, it starts compounding that you want to run your boosted posts forever and never stop. And then eventually, uh, run a campaign too. This boosting post is just an easier way to start for you guys, but eventually, you want to just get a campaign that you have set at $20 a day, $30 a day, and just let it run infinitely. I have a Facebook video that I did. I was running Facebook ads towards the tail end of my business, but then I sold my business. But the Facebook ads, I got like a 3.5x return. It would have been a lot more if I was more on top of responding to people and nurturing. But Facebook ads is very simple. I didn't want to talk too long. That's all I got on Facebook ads. I hope that helps. Does anybody have any questions? Can you boost your ad in specific groups? Or is it just across? It's across all of Facebook, yeah. yeah. Can you uh, talk about uh, Oh shit, yeah. Um, my software. Uh, Yes. Uh, what's that? No, no. Uh, do you have a quick question? So I was gonna say, so on the top it says like, "Hey, I'm Andrew," and it's a very playful message. Does that it says my name is Andrew? It doesn't say, "Hey, I'm Andrew." It says, "My name is Andrew." Uh, well, no, I'm is just, it I'm like, uh, is that the best converting text you've seen? Or because I've seen like the one I ran, I copied another person. It's like junk removal made easy phone number website. So I'm gonna be honest with you. I have tried so many different ads. I've lost track. This one did pretty good, me personally introducing myself, but you don't have to do it that way, Mike. I wish I remembered. I have at least 30 ads in here. So, um, answer your question, I don't know. I would just, it's so cheap, 10 bucks a day, split test, but I think that did the best. But you can do one where it's not, you're like, hey, my name is Andrew, you can do one like, hey, need junk removal, and just split test the two, see which one converts better. And Andrew, can you explain uh, to the group how having a good website and doing this would actually help you, but having a weak website and you sending them from Google ads or Facebook ads to your website wouldn't be shit for you if you had a really bad website? You know, something that can, something that would organically be better for you. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I wouldn't recommend doing any of this until you don't do any, of, don't even run Google ads. Here's the thing, when you run Google ads, there's a high chance a lot of these people saw you and are gonna Google you later, right? And they're gonna look you up and they're gonna look up reviews. So without a website, yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't do, yeah, that goes without saying, don't do any of this shit until you do all this stuff that he talked about. Have all your ducks in a row before you start. Now, could you get away with Facebook ads and probably get business and not have a good website? Probably, but yeah, absolutely. Make sure you have a good website. Um, especially with Google Ads, because people might go to my landing page and they'll just not call and they'll search up later. And they'll be like, oh shit, yeah, I saw you, I dropped Google, right? So absolutely, there's probably a ton of fall off from Google Ads that do come back later and search you in a different way and find you. So definitely have a website, 